Wow, these things are heavy. I'm Zachary Fowler. And I'm the Wooded Beardsman. And this is the Wilderness Living Challenge, Maine. Yeah! Woo! <laughs> the point of the challenge is to gain or maintain our body weight while eating nothing but wild foods for seven days. Last time we did it in Canada. This time, he's come down to join me in the coastal state of Maine. Good morning. Day three. Uh, fire's going over there. Got the fish on to smoke up there. Kept stoking it through the night. The birds are chirping. I think I heard Chris and Chris head out. They're going out on a turkey hunt. I'm going to stay here with the uh, Malcolm and work on a table for camp. And uh, later we'll be going out to check our lobster traps. So if you want to see that turkey hunt and stuff like that, check out the link below for the Wood of Beardsman's channel and his videos on our whole series here. But right now that coffee's calling to me. I think I'm going to get a pot of coffee on. <laughs> Whew, those fish that uh, Malcolm put on to smoke yesterday when we were out clamming are looking pretty dark and good. And the whole fish are the ones that we put on last night before I went to bed. Those still have a ways to go. If you notice, there's some parts that are like, they look like they're missing, like they're zombie fish. That's because when we scale them up by underneath like their throat and the belly area, they are really hard to scale. The scales just won't come off. So our method was just uh, when you hit that kind of scales and they just will not flake off. You just take your knife and you slice underneath of them, peel a little bit away. There's not much there on the belly. It's all in like the back and around the bone. We're hoping that smoking them though, 
will reduce the uh, bone problem because when you pull out the main spinal cord and rib cage there's these little feathery bones all through it so we're gonna smoke them for a good long time and then we will probably cook them a little bit on top of that to see if that can't reduce that problem maybe we'll be able to crunch right through them just like sardines they remind me a lot of sardines the way their skin is kind of uh, silky like that once they've been scaled and stuff they taste good except for those little bones you just as you're eating them they feel like they're gonna get stuck in the back of your throat you know so but we still got a half a bucket of clams and fish head soup is on coffee is on I think I'm gonna have a little bit of my quiet time I hear noises from the from the woods over there I think Malcolm smelt the coffee as it's cooking for those of you wondering why I got my phone out for my Bible time the uh, I use the Our Daily Bread app on the phone. It's a little devotional and a, a scripture verse that goes with it each day. Chronicles 3, 12 through 17. Somebody smelt the coffee. Good morning. Fire for the cor I got wood for the fire. Nice. Isn't it nice when you have somebody over and they don't show up empty handed? <laughs> Come on in. Come on in. How'd you sleep? Well, I, lo I love sleeping in that hammock. I, yeah. The minute I went to bed, I woke up. It was already it was already in the morning. Have you ever tried other hammocks besides War Bonnet? Yeah, like cheap ones, you know. Yeah, just, I have a cheap one in my house that just somebody a, sent me. Sing, it's a single. Um, yeah. You can't lay sideways. I like the wall bonnets because you can go sideways and sleep flat. Yeah. I sleep on my belly sometimes. Yeah, just, just totally. for like an hour in the morning and stuff. People are like, you can't sleep on your belly in a hammock, like, you know. Yeah, they'll, they'll think you're like gonna. Yeah, like no, it doesn't up. work like that. You sleep yeah. pretty flat. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I call it go in the. I go on my side a lot of times. I go in the fetus, the fetal position. Yeah, nice and warm. It just snuggles you and you feel so good and it makes your back feel good. And oh yeah, I've thought about putting it up inside my house and you're, sleeping you're, in that inside my house. You're floating. You're literally yeah. floating in a piece of nylon. Yeah. Oh, soup is boiling good. Take that off the heat. There you go, buddy. Thank you, sir. So those of you that are wondering, what in the world am I doing with a fancy Samsung Galaxy watch? I got it because I want to see the amount of calories and steps I do compared to my day-to-day -day life when I'm eating what I'm eating out here, feeling good, and pretty much every time I do one of these, I'm losing, you know, a pound or a half a pound a day. So I thought I'd add that to the challenge as far as later when I'm editing, I'll be able to put it all together, and little clips down below and a little mention about that. And this thing, after doing the 30-day survival challenge, bare minimum gave me a neck scarf from Hoorag, and Hoorag reached out to me because they saw me using it, and I said, hey, how about we work together and you guys set me up with one. I had this idea. <laughs> is, it, is it on right? Is it a little, need a little adjustment of putting the orange beard from my logo right there. So everybody could get one. They're on the website, Fowler's Makery and Mischief and, uh, dot com. And you can also, it looks so funny. <laughs> It's kind of silly that I have it here in the in the summertime, I thought, but um, a bunch of people told me that they're great also for out in the summer and the sun and you're fishing instead of putting on sunscreen. And I use it always around my wrist. That's what I used it for mostly during the 30 day survival challenge. I have it around my wrist and I use it as a towel, washing stuff, wiping off my camera lens, and then I wash it and hang it back up. So I usually have two of these on me at all times. So that's what that's all about. And Hoorag as a sponsor for this series. One of the sponsors, as well as this guy, 
and Blackout Coffee sponsors. They make the world go around and make it so that I can keep having these adventures and bringing these videos to you. So I hope you're not too offended by the plugs half the time. But uh, Hoorag, you can find the link below and you can get your custom Hoorag for your company. I think this thing is pretty cool. I use it all the time. I don't leave home on an adventure without one of these on my person. No, I use it I, when, I, when I sleep in the hammock. My nose gets real cold because I'm just like sitting here. Yeah. So I literally put it above my face. <laughs> and like, or I get my eyes here. And it, yeah. It's it, all the, the whole when you breathe in, in a sleeping bag, it gets all the moisture on your sleeping bag. Yeah. Well, this will block that. So all the moisture goes down to this instead of all on your sleeping bag if you get it over your head. Nice. So I use it and keep it over my face nice and warm. Yeah. I also made a camo one. Um, so there's actually three versions of this. There's like a blue one with the the words on it, and then there's a camo one that has disguised uh, our bearded logo. You can see it right here. So what do you think? You downed it pretty quick? Yeah, it's delicious. Yeah. Which one do you like better? The um, the This one's the, the morning, reaper. morning Reaper, and now we've had three of them, so. I liked one last night. You like the yeah. the pitch black espresso? Pitch black. That that one made that my, one's my favorite. That one made my my bottom lip get a little quivery. It's, like that's a little excited. Yeah. Like, Woo -hoo, you Woo -hoo. can taste it. Like you can feel it. You There's so much it. flavor in it. It's I like how it's so dark that it's not um, dark and it makes your gut hurt or something. Yeah, it's you not, know, it's not acidic. I hear the boys are back. Did you get a turkey? Did you get a squirrel? He <laughs> apparently got a squirrel, but no turkey yet. So, hopefully there's something in those lobster traps, because we're getting, <laughs> this one squirrel doesn't divide up very well. <laughs> what you got there? Breakfast. Breakfast. Yeah, bunch of hens, no, no toms. No toms? Yeah. Here you go, mighty hunter. <laughs> Thank you. Have your cup of coffee. Uh, I probably only deserve a half a cup with just bringing back a squirrel. <laughs> Thank you, though. <laughs> Scored some fiddleheads? Scored some fiddleheads. Oh yeah. That's a good pile there. That's a that'll go great with the old lobster and clams and fiddleheads. A little bit of roughage. Nice. Good job. Now you want to pay attention to these. These have a groove in the middle and papery tops. You can see a little bit of the paperiness. You don't want the furry ones. Mm -hmm. See that little bit of paper? Let's see if I can get the zoom. See this stuff right here? This is like this papery, Oops, papery stuff right here is on the head. You don't want the furry ferns. Some ferns can be poisonous. So make sure you do your research before you go start mowing uh, wild edibles. Don't take anybody's advice from a YouTube video and start eating things the way they do and uh, trusting them about it all because, you know, people make mistakes. I make mistakes sometimes and call things what they aren't. You want to research, read your books. That's how I learned about everything that I know about. What was that guy that lived in a bus that died uh, um, in Alaska? Kit McCannis. Yeah, in, into the wild, you know? He's a great example. Chris McCannis. Yeah, he, he went out there, he had some books, but he didn't have a lot of experience, and he didn't read all the book, because of like the page over or something like that from from like the, the plant that he ate. Well, bugs are getting bad already. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, it was nice inside the shelter, all that smoke. <laughs> So make sure you do research, read your books, read multiple books so you know what you're doing. And don't trust, uh, trust some YouTuber saying, this is edible. Do your own research. just dumped out the refuse of last night's feast behind Chris's tent. He wants to see a lot of wildlife while he's here, so I thought I'd put it over here, right behind his tent, see if we can't bring some wildlife in for him to videotape. Oh. 
Oh, so fishy. Sanitation. I'll have to like burn sanitize it. Go ahead. Yeah, give it a good hit. There. Hey, it's not so bad. That's like a hundred times better than it was. And since I'm using hemlock, it has that wonderful piney scent that everybody loves. go feast is on look at all that all right guys good Zach. oh they're delicious aren't they that's twenty dollars ever Whoops, I should probably clarify that statement. It was $20 for the clamming license, not at the store. Go back and watch yesterday's video if you want to see us harvest these. Hard work, but man, so delicious. Oh. I'm, they don't even need the wadobo, but it just adds that a little bit more of just, wow. These are so good. Breakfast of champions here. The broken ones that we broke while digging them are definitely full of sand. The, uh, you know what the problem is? I know what the problem is. In the past, I've always shucked them from the shell and rinsed them in some butter. And we don't have butter to rinse them in because this is the Wilderness Living Challenge and we haven't caught any wild butter to dip these in. So, that's the way to do it. Steam them up, dump a bunch of wadobo on it, shake them around and have yourself some yummy, delicious clams. If you can't get out there because you don't live in somewhere where you could do this, you should totally go to the grocery store and buy yourself some and give it a try. They're so good. Let's rinse it. Let me in on this. I got my last three were broken ones and they are pretty, pretty, wow, that's cold water. I tip it on Oh, that was cool. I tell you, I do, I much rather rinse them in butter, but this'll do. There you go. Now I muddied the water with my last. I'll just use this algae bottle. Is that okay if I rinse? Yeah, it? just go. That's Chris's there. Just <laughs> yeah, just shake. Put them in there. Shake and bake. And <laughs> put the soil in there. Sand and grit. Holy Clamp bugs, juice. boys! Though. Just wrap the whole thing around to clove hitch it. I don't know what a clove hitch is. I guess I'm a bad teacher here. He doesn't even know how to do a clove hitch yet. That's a shameful. That's my bad. You could do just about anything if you know the five most important knots, and this is one of them. All right, there it is, right there. <laughs> shot it right off the thing and broke the stick off the tree from all the abuse. Ah, oh, and then I missed. It was like 10 feet further back now. I don't know how many what that was. I'll put it right here. That was not a bad run. I love slingshots. This is my, uh, I'm calling this one the Sparrow. I made this uh, over a year ago now and I shot it at last East Coast Slingshot Tournament. I'll be shooting it again. And I want to have it molded and turned it into a professional one. But until then, if you like slingshot, simple shot. Or my website where I sell the simple shot slingshots. This one, someday, it'll be a custom one available for everyone.
All right, what do you think? Predictions. Leave it in the comments below, guys. How many lobsters do we have in our traps after leaving them out? One night over? Two nights over? Yeah. Wait, I'm lost. We put it out on day one. It's day three. It's been two nights. Two nights. Yeah. I'm thinking, I'm going to guess... I'm gonna guess four and three keepers. One, one, one or two will be two. No, no, we, uh, I'm gonna say five and three keepers. You know why I tilted my head for? What? Because the expert said two. He said expect two out of five traps. Yeah. And I was just gonna go five and just, so we're, I think we're, we're both gonna go with five. Five? Yeah, just five. So there'll be five in the traps. And all keepers for me. All keepers. I'm saying five in the traps and at least two that'll be keepers. Okay. Um, and and then I think there'll be at least a quarter of a bucket worth of crabs, if not a half a bucket worth of crabs. So. Time will tell. Let's see. myself see your first buoy right out there it's good it's still floating yeah it is <laughs> she's still floating we set them at low tide so we were a little worried that they would be uh, under and then we'd do something wrong but we I think we nailed it all right so Chris can't help me because legally only I am allowed to touch the traps, bait the trap, so I gotta haul it up onto the side, get it onto the boat, put new bait in it, turn back around after we've drifted a little ways and then try to drop it back in the pretty much the same spot or over a couple feet. Let's see, let's see what we can do. Lord protect us as we attempt to become lobstermen in one day. Wow, these things are heavy. I 
I would have said I'm in 10 feet of water. I realize how heavy this is. That's definitely a, a throwback. All right, so I got my Gerber tether tool and I can measure them. See what we got. Right there from the back of the eye socket to the, too small. Three that's too small. There you go though, we, we had a bunch. And so far, striking out. On, be a keeper. Oh, it's too small. Too small. There's a keeper. There it is. Right on. Look at it. Look at it right there. Watch a keeper. 100% from the back of the eye socket. Nice. With the tool, back of the eye socket to the back of the shell. He is 100% a keeper. Oh, he's got my glove. I got. He's got me. Come on. All right, these guys gotta go back. Whole lot of excitement for too many tiny lobsters. You see that? It slides right over the back of his shell from the eye socket. That's a disappointment. They're so close, like. But we're running everything legit. Come on, have a longer shell than you look like you got. Nope. Nope. One. Beautiful lobster. If we can get one out of each trap, that's five lobsters. Uh, just give me two. This will this will be fine. Might make a difference. It's worth the risk. All right. That's a lot of work for one measly lobster, but man, it's gonna taste so good. Thank you, Lord. So we'll just move our line a little bit further in because the buoys are stretched right out right now. See if we can't fish a slightly different spot off the bottom. All right, here we go. That was painful. It had, I don't know, Zach took about seven in there. I'm gonna throw every single one except for one, one, one. Oh yeah, we're here though. Yeah, so cold. I need a breath. I can't even see it yet. I'm gonna try it without the gloves on. They feel like it makes it harder. Oh! Got the bottom, so. Yeah, we got another Woo! big haul. Woo! Good keeper. One more. Two more, maybe. Here. Yeah, maybe two. There's it's been eight, nine, ten, like twelve. Twelve. That's pretty that good. That would be a heck of a haul if we could keep all 12. Oh man, yeah. Not legal. Ah, yeah. Sure. Definitely not legal. No, not even close. Not legal. Not legal. Not legal. Look at that, that one. That one is 100%. That's a keeper. Wait, legal. wait. 100%. It, no, wait. Yeah, it's, legal. it's well legal. No, we gotta check the other side. If it's oh, too, no, it, no, if it was bigger than that gap, then we couldn't keep it. Really? Yeah, so we got between here, keeper, and then if it was bigger than this, we gotta let it go. Wait, and I did this the last time, but I didn't show you. Check it for eggs. If we find the with them with eggs, we gotta notch the back flipper. The first one to the right of center has to be notched, a quarter inch notch, and thrown back because she would be a breeder. All right, I know it's not the best picture there, but uh, when you put them side by side, it's pretty easy to tell. The female on the left, those first swim fins are feathery and light and flexible, and the male, they're hard. It's a keeper. It's a keeper. It doesn't go over the back. It's a keeper. There we go. Three keepers. I'll have to let go and go back, go back to the sea and grow and have children and have a wonderful life. Take care. I'll name you Bob, Bob Hansler. 
Bye, Bob. There we go. <sighs> That's exhausting. Two down, three to go. I mean, I don't know where it is, Zach. <laughs> I don't think it's I'm not, a... I'm not helping. <laughs> no, it's not. You're definitely not helping. Why would I? <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> Can't touch the rope. Can't. Nah, 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 nah. I told you, homeboy. Can't touch this. Nah, 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 nah. Can't touch this. Ooh, <sighs> other load. Those look bigger. Ah, oh, so close. He's there. We got another keeper. Does that make four? Uh, yeah, number four. four. We got one more and we got my, we got my prediction. We that got, one looks it. big that's right it. here. That's number five. This one looks big. Yeah, that's number five, 100%. It's holding on to it. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's that's the biggest one so far. Uh, number five. Yeah, number five. This one's a female. I see. I don't, if I can't, I can't tell with my sunglasses on, but you see how these these swim fins right here are feathery. That makes it a female. Now we gotta check it. Is there a notch? There is no notch right there. So, and she has no eggs. It's all ours. Bowie. Man, I'd be ripped if I was doing this every other day. Oh wow, full again. Yeah, <laughs> tiny. Yeah, real small. Tiny. Wow. Tiny, tiny but tiny. Wait, no, no, tiny. <laughs> I accidentally hooked it in the wrong spot for half a second there, I thought, yay. Not a one. So only one trap's a dud. I'll name you Jeffrey. Have a nice life, Jeffrey. Take care. Have, oh, you're female. Maybe Jeffrietta? I don't know. Leave in the comments below. What should I name the female lobster? One more trap. One more trap. I think you're coming ahead on the calories there? Well, if I was doing it by myself, completely, you know, and that, that, that would, you know, and I just went up there and dipped, and I came down and with 25 alewives, you know, and, and then put the traps out. It's kind of hard to hear because of all the wind, but we're speculating on whether uh, one person harvesting the alewives themselves like we did with the dip net, then coming down, setting the traps, and taking the lobster out of the ocean, we would provide enough calories to be sustainable. I don't know. It'd be a meager existence. Yeah, you'd be a lean, mean, fighting machine, that's for sure. Well, if you ate every single lobster you caught, yeah. no regs. Oh, with no regs? Yeah, then you're, that means you got to add that in there, right? I don't know how much fat is in them, though. <clears throat> we'll have to look that up. I'll put that right here. How much fat is in a lobster? Buttered, buttered lobster? Buttered lo There's tons of fat in buttered lobster. I said five and three keepers. Chris was right. He wins at five. Ooh, that's another big hole. Too small. Nothing. Not a single one this time again. All right, well, let's go home and eat some lobster. All right, back up to the shelter to cook up our lobsters. I am starving, how about you? Starving. Starving. Let's 
So we got back, brought back some seaweed as well. We didn't bring salt water, which would have been genius, but we're gonna put some adobo and the seaweed in there and steam these puppies up. It's good stuff. If you got three spices on your shelf, this should definitely be one of them. Not just for outdoor stuff, but for steaks and things as well. I think we're gonna have to open this up. Going heavy. I'm gonna really salt that water since we didn't bring back salt. That'll make them epic. I'm cooking lobster. Here we go. We ready? Yep. Is this the send off? The send off. Goodbye. Bye, lobster. Thank you for your sacrifices. Are you sad, Zach? No. <laughs> no? A little bit? No. Nope. Okay. That's two. Ouch! That one got me back. Maybe just set them in there. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I'm trying to give them a plunge so that they actually die. Here comes number two or three. Three. Don't get bit. Yeah, no, I'm. I'm. I'm I know. I can know how to hold the crayfish. I'm. I'm doing all right. Yeah, you are. You hold the the thorax. Yeah. Oh, that one's trying to reach. Now I talk about thoraxes gonna get his revenge a little bit there. Number four. Uh, number five. And number six. I don't know how much we pay for it in Ontario, but it's a lot of money. Twenty bucks. a lot. I can't afford twenty bucks. Oof, they're done. That's one antenna, two antennas. They're breaking right off. Let me get them out of there. Wow, that's hot. cup of coffee to go with it. Only thing that would make this better is if that was full of butter. But I have a feeling that these are gonna be really good just the way they are. I, I think we're gonna be more than happy. Ooh, that's hot still. Yeah, they're nuclear. You Ooh. got you got weapons? Oh, I have a knife. A knife? <laughs> that might be a little on the hard side. Uh, I might have to share the multi-tool. Okay. Take it and you get it back here. Yeah. Squeeze it. Yeah, watch break it. Watch coffee. I just <laughs> added a little extra protein into my coffee <laughs> and pull it out. Okay. Very simple. Yeah. And then you can I probably have to break it again back here. Like that. Yeah. Pull that out and then that should pull free. And then inside of here you have to break Is there still? There's a there's a little I thought there was a little blade in the middle. It must have come out. Oh, here it is. There's a little blade in the middle and sometimes it will come out with the meat and other times it won't. Oh, what is it? It's so good. Oh wait, I forgot to say grace. Lord, thank you for this bountiful harvest. Lobster, what a score. Just name amen. Oh, it doesn't need it. No? Okay. It is so we perfect. Already, we already put it in. Here, go for it. Okay. So that, that, that's the claws, is there, there's more meat in there. There's more meat, there's a tail. Okay, well, I'll, show me the whole thing. No, go for the claw. Okay. And I'll show you the tail, you just rip it off. Yeah. And then you pull the back end of the tail. Okay. Oh. She squirts sometimes. <laughs> oh, the back end of the tail. Okay. Oh. <laughs> and then you can push the whole chunk of meat out you push your finger in there. Okay. Whoa. Yeah. And then the meat comes out. Yeah, yeah. Wow, look at the size of that piece. That green stuff is tabbouleh. That's good for you. It's tabbouleh. They give it a fancy name because it's it? like the poop. Well, it's yeah. like the digestive. Yeah, it's what's in the stomach. It's gotcha. not the poop track. It's not right, 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 so right. far. Yeah. And uh, and then you pull off. Oh. You pull off something? You pull off this strip right here across the back. Yeah. Of that. And... This one doesn't seem to have it, but sometimes they have a really heavy poop track. Some people are like picky and they pull it out. There's like a, you know, it'll be like a black line. Yeah. If it is. Okay. And uh, this guy was really clean. So, 
it's ready to go and ready to be eaten. Nice. And the rest of the claw bit, that all there, you just keep crushing it and breaking them apart and pushing your finger through there or a stick and pulling out the pieces. Cool. Mm. Cool. Here, we'll double me. We'll double you. All right. I'm saving mine for... The claw had a lot of flavor, but that one needs a little... Saving my lobsters for my camera, I wanted, but I wanted to learn how to do it first so oh. that I could show my people how to do it from a new new person's perspective. And I'll probably mess it up, but that's okay. Is there anything left, like inside here? Uh, we're going to cook the bodies down Okay. and make a st stew with them so we will have get as much out of this as possible because we're not going to waste anything. Just like I did the crawfish in Texas, you know, it's like we're going to make a stew out of it. Okay, so when we're done, the bot like everything's going to go back in? Everything the will claws. go back in the stew pot, the claws, er everything goes back in the stew pot and we get a little bit more out of it. Because okay. there's like in here, there's little bits of, see that little bits of white? Yeah. Those are yeah. fat. So something didn't feel right when I told Chris that that was fat in and around the meat, there's little white globules, and sure enough, it is hemolint. It's kind of like the lobster's blood. Yeah. That's just like, just flopping around inside of there, and once we boil it and dissolve it into the soup. Oh man, look at all that meat. Look at the size of that thing. There we go. Mmm. This is like the richest thing we've had so far. And it's even richer because it's been a couple days of alewives and clams, which are just... <gasps> no! No! Five second rule. Mmm. Boy, if we don't have raccoons tonight, then I'm like so hungry. I'm just delirious about this. I'm just. We're killing it. Unfortunately, I'm running out of time. I double booked myself. I got a speaking gig to go to in Ellsworth. So I got to skip out for three hours. I think I'm going to save the rest of my lobsters to eat when I get back. Maybe one more claw. I'm out of here. Little adobo. Mm. Alright, I gotta go. You save those for me? I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do my best. You better put them in your pocket. <laughs> Take these with me. Are you me. sure you only got three? You got three new ones. <laughs> I gotta go. <laughs> Alright, see ya. Alright, I am out of here for about three hours. Fortunately, I had just enough time to eat the majority of my lobsters before I hit the road. It's like a couple knuckles and then the body soup that we can get into and then the smaller legs we could pick away at later when I get back tonight. So I am not breaking the challenge just because I'm heading up the road for this speaking gig in Ellsworth where I'm going to be doing a, um, well basically like my alone presentation and talking about survival and stuff to all the people there. I'll uh, see you in a, well, for me, it'll be three hours. For you guys, a couple minutes. For being such a good audience, guys. <laughs> Have a good night. All right, we're out of here. Back to the woods, back to the challenge. I didn't eat anything, did I? No! All right, see, you got it. Just kidding. I'm joking. Even if I was that hungry, I wouldn't go there. Back to the woods. Just stopped on my way back. Next stop, the shelter in the woods. All right, I get to try out my light bars that are down on the brush guard. These things, woo, look at that. Lights up the night. I had a longer one to go on the roof rack, but uh, it was too long, so it didn't look very good on the car, so I never installed it. I don't know if I'm gonna put one up there or not. This is pretty darn bright. I can't imagine needing more than this. Yeah. 
Good evening. Put me on that path. You know? Hey guys. Good morning. Good night, actually. Evening. You're back. We have a surprise for you. What do you got? Porcupine stew. Porcupine stew? Yep. yep. Where's the turkey? No luck on the turkey. No luck on the turkey. The bush is still. Still in the bush. I saw two, two, long beards. Uh, there were 40 yards. They had to go in about more, 10 more, and they just kind of veered off. Oh. It was this close. It was this close. No kidding. I know exactly where they are. Oh, nice. You got a nice little fire going in my shelter. Thank you, guys. Well, we need to smoke the fish and stuff, so I'm sure it wasn't all for me, but to preserve our food. Food's looking good, and who it is smoky in here. So you can decide if you want porcupine lobster stew or lobster stew. <laughs> Por porcupine bisque? Anybody for porcupine bisque? Surf and turf. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the main surf and turf there. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, that's a sure good eat. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Should be ready for a sip there. Where did you guys find him? Just up there on the hill. Oh yeah? Yeah. Up a tree? Yeah. No kidding. It wasn't a big one, but I mean, we're you not got a picky. Clean headshot too. Yeah. Yeah, I ripped it. Clean right off. Yeah. Yeah, we got it on tape. I mean, it's not graphic. Oh, okay. I mean, it's just you know, a pile of quills falling out of the sky. It's not like you know, it could be worse. Right. <laughs> I had a good time. Yeah. I I was speaking to uh, Maine. Uh, it, there was like a rescue conference kind of thing. Yeah. So I wasn't super hungry, but I arrived there right at dinner time for them. Oh. And they're like, you're speaking at seven. And they're all finishing up their dinner. I can smell all the dinner smells. And it wasn't actually all that tempting. After having the three lobster tails and the six claws, I was actually feeling pretty decent. Well, I'm waiting for my lobster to get up to heat and boil, sanitize. I'm gonna get a cup of porcupine bisque out of there for myself. good tastes like like lobster slash some sort of meat animal soup kind of like our uh, crawfish uh, crawfish raccoon ever stew there in uh, Texas during the 30 day survival challenge it feels very 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 sustenant rich though and definitely a slight hint of Wadobo, of course. People are gonna be like, ah, oh, stop saying it. Stop saying Wadobo. If you say that one more time, I'm gonna unsubscribe. Wadobo. <laughs> All right. Oh, I am ready for bed. You see the fire over here is cooking away. Got two logs next to me to add to it during the night, and then I'll just let it go out if I wake up in time to put them on there. Ah, oh, what a great day. This lobster, Chris getting the porcupine. Check out the link below for the playlist for both of these uh, series if you want to start at the beginning. You should go watch, uh, actually even maybe skip back and watch our season in Canada that we did season four and then come watch this one for, through but uh, definitely if you want to see Chris getting the porcupine and how he dealt with all that check out the link below I'll see you guys tomorrow thanks for watching Fowler out this season of the Wilderness Living Challenge has been brought to you in part by Bath Subaru and Woolwich, Maine LP Aventure for making the Adventure Mobile a reality Hidden Woodsman Backpacks, the best backpacks made on earth of the best materials. Ayuno Survival Shovel. Gerber Knives and Multi-Tools, made right here in the U.S. Outdoor Vitals, the maker of my favorite jacket, sleeping bag, and this really cool pillow. And Hoorag, have Hoorag make you a custom company Hoorag today. <laughs> Link's in the description below.